Hello YouTubers, this is a new session where we get to start talking about some uh, a little bit more advanced topic when it comes to developing uh, enterprise product level systems, you know, in C-Sharp.net. Uh, today I'm going to talk to you about a concept that's very, very familiar for C++ developers, but it might not be that common, maybe because it's not implemented or represented in that particular way. Today we're going to talk about friends. Did you know that C-sharp classes could be friends with each other? They can be great friends and they can share, you know, their internals, their secrets, you know, the private things that they don't normally share with other classes, just like the case with, with people, with human beings, right? So uh, what does that even mean and why do you need something like that? Let's just, you know, jump straight into you know the the board here and let me just explain to you what's going on. Let's just assume you have class you have class uh, A, class A, and you have class B, right? And class B, you know, are friends with class A. What that basically means is that class A have designated, you know, to become besties and friends with with this class. However, there's class C in here that is also trying to access class A, but it can only see the uh, public or external you know, uh, methods, you know, of that particular class. Why is that important? It's super important because it, sometimes you want your class B to be it actually a class B, which is testing class A. So you have unit test, you know, you have, you know, implementations that you only want to be exposed to, you know, a particular project, but you don't want your client that's consuming that class to have access to that information. You don't want your client to be able to access your internal methods and internal uh, uh, capabilities. And, you know, such as the case, how we build, uh, you know, our standardized, you know, systems, any system out there, you'll see that your unit test, acceptance test, whatever test you're building are their own project, their own assembly. Well, you know, you have the, your own project and your own assembly, and you're trying to access, you know, some internal internal information to test or unit test, you know, particular routines and you can't do it because it's all internal because you're trying to hide it from the client or the opposite way where, you know, the client has way too much access, you know, to the outside world. Let's let's just, you know, try to create a quick example here just to show you what that looks like. This is going to blow your mind. You're going to love this. So let's just go here and create just a quick solution to simple console app. And let's just say this is, you know, friends forever, friends five ever, right? So here's friends five ever solution. And let's go ahead and create a quick, here you go. Okay, there you go. And, you know, I'll tell you the inspiration of this, but I'll come down to that part in a second. But let's just say that friends five ever, you know, there is this library in here a project or a library or another console app, whoever cares, right? So here's class, and let's say this is class A, or, or library A, library A, like this. So here's library A, and then you also have library B. Let's go here and say this is library B, like this. Okay, and, uh, you know, library A has class A, and library B has class B, class B, like this, right? Now, here's the deal. Assume that your program CS is basically trying to run a test against class A, right? You might have an interface called I class A, and that's okay. You know, that's just a contract. You can also hide it if you want. It doesn't matter. You know, but let's just say you have a function in here. Let's say public void um, uh, do a like this. And you have a function in here is that public void do b like that. Okay, now here's the problem. If this, if class A and class B are basically internals, they're not things that are not meant to be externally consumable you know, by a consumer from that library, this is a problem because at this level here, you can literally go and say var class A equal new class A like that. And you could probably pull in, uh, let's see, oh, I need to add my dependency here. So there's class A, clickety click, 
here's the thing. I thought it'd be a little bit smarter than that, but anyway. So here's class A, right? And you know that little thing here on the side, it's uh, it's an option that I have here for do, doing suggestions, so, so don't be really, uh, don't be con too concerned with that. The problem here is that class A now is, you know, I can do A so easily, even though I'm not supposed to, right? I'm not supposed to access that. I want that method to be exposed in to a different class let's say this is the test class but I do want it to be exposed to the customer or the client that is going to use this how do you do that if you go at the top here and you go and do assembly right expose uh, internals visible to now watch this if I do this it will help me kind of find the projects and my solutions Look at this. This is autocomplete. It's not your typical string. It's something else, right? So if I say only expose this whole thing in here to class B, now you're going to see something interesting happen in here. Because you define this class publicly, this annotation is not going to be helpful to you in any way, shape, or form because you already said, you know, this is public. Instead, you want to go here and say, no, actually, this is internal class, like this. And this is where it gets very, very interesting. Because now, if you go into the program, watch what happens. They say, hey, you don't have that access. In fact, actually, you, you don't even have the autocomplete. Like, autocomplete won't even give you that kind of power. Why is that? Because I went and said this class A is only exposed to library B. So library B as an assembly is the only one that can access that guy specifically. Okay, which basically means that if I add that reference of library A in here, I can actually go here and say class A like this, and it will be totally okay with it because they're friends with each other. So class, so library A and library B are friends. You can do that in here because you specifically said, hey, by the way, I'm besties with this guy. But you can't do it in here because that should not be exposed to the outside customer. Okay, that's the gist of it. Why is that important? This is super important because when you're building secure systems, you don't want the internals of your systems to be exposed to the outside world. You want to be able to still test drive certain components and I'm going to show you that in a second in a real life project but you don't want that to be exposed to the end user or the customer right what does that look like in the real world here's a real life project that you know I talked about for a while it's called Levent Levent is a .NET library and what this library does it allows you to kind of do um, uh, 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 internal eventing right you're sending events it's managing the events for you super useful super important can't dig deep deeper into this right now because it's a whole session in and of itself to just talk about that part if you look at this library you'll find a little problem the event broker in here which is like the library is called Levent. it's right here right and you have unit tests which are supposed to have access to this library like if you look in our unit tests in here you'll see that your unit test is going and saying okay I have I event handler registration service and this event handler registration service needs to be instantiated this service is internal it's not supposed to be exposed to the outside world right so if my manual kind of implementation here is uh, trying to instantiate look I can go up in here and say hey here is a little function in here public void something right and I can literally go and say I event uh, registration handler service or something like that whatever I called it let's see what did I call it let's see in our tests in here what like one foundation service that is not supposed to be exposed in any way shape or form there it is look I have access to that why does the customer needs to have access to that in fact actually it could be extremely dangerous because these uh, classes and these methods are not supposed to give you that kind of power let's see why this guy's erroring out first uh, oh yeah it takes like a like a uh, like like a, a generic type look these functions and these methods could be giving you access to internal 
ways that would allow hacking your library and allowing exposing certain capabilities and functionality that is not supposed to be exposed. Someone might say, well, we're not supposed to make this available. Well, well, if you really are modularizing your code and breaking your code into smaller services that actually have single responsibility, it can be a security risk. How do we solve that problem, right? Exactly the same way. I can go into my uh, Levent library under the foundation service, and here's your event registration service, and I can just slap this guy in here. I can go and say assembly, right, and then uh, uh, internals visible to, internals visible to, and I get to choose who actually can access this library, right? So if you look in here, it will go and say, okay, you want to you wanna allow this to be exposed to your unit tests, but you don't want it to be exposed to your uh, customers or consumers. So if we go back to this event broker, this guy should error out. Let's see if that's true. Oh, did I put it? I put it on the, uh, one second. I put it on the implementations, put it in here as well. There you go. Like this. And then if I go back into that event broker, that guy should error out. Let's see. I need a, I need a build maybe. Let's see. Let's see here. So this is I event handler registration. Levent test unit. Okay. And does it? Oh yeah. The, the the thing itself needs to be internal. That's right. Forgot that part. Internal. Internal or private. So if we leave it private like this, and we leave this one also um, internal or private. And this guy's gonna freak out because we have other things that are like this internal. And I think also we need to do the same thing in here. There you go. So that's for this guy and that's for this guy. So all of this is private or internal. And now if you go back here, now you have an error saying, dude, you don't have access to this. But does your unit test actually have that? Like, does your unit test have that kind of access? Yep, it will not be touched. Say, hey, we're actually friends, and you should be able to access that kind of capability, right? Um, I will go back into most of my libraries because this is just something that, you know, I learned today, and it's, it's a great thing just to kind of see this kind of capability and this kind of security that you can end to build even higher quality, better systems. Um, I will update most of my libraries, so this is going to be something that we uh, adapt across the board. But this is also a, a good thing for people who are trying to kind of, you know, are thinking a little bit more than just getting things to work. They want to build something higher quality, something that allows certain access to certain systems, but not to other systems. Uh, by the way, just before I forget, you know, uh, I will also share this documentation with you. But let's say, for instance, you are in a situa situation where you want to share it with multiple projects. You can always add multiple projects in here. You can literally go in here and say, you know what, you know, I changed my mind. I'm going to be friends with manual as well. Let's see if I got that right. Levent. Let's see here. Attribute does not. Constructor. I think it takes a bunch of these. All internals available. Let's go back to the documentation real quick because that's where it's at. Here we go. Oh, you just need to add it again and again. Okay, got it. Got it. Yeah, that's the part that I was missing. So in here, this would be literally just another one of these like this. So assembly internals available to and then here you go. Just like that. So now if I go back to this guy, now this guy's happy. Right? I hope you find this a little bit kind of useful. This is actually really really important. It's a huge security risk in your code if you're not available of it. You know, take a look at it, you know, it, it might not be that important if you're building just domain systems like APIs and because these things are already secure as is like you, in order for you to access that system you need to call an API restful endpoint so you can't just grab the actual assembly of the project but if you're building something like a desktop application or a library or you know an SDK something that is going to be grabbed as is and is really technology specific you want to use that use internals only and uh, you know go dig a little bit deeper into the options there's a lot of good stuff in there and you know uh, i hope this is useful to you in some way and if you have any questions comments concerns please feel free to drop, feel free to drop a comment in the comment section and don't forget to like and subscribe see you in another video take care